what's good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so we're going to check out 10 greatest extreme rule pay-per-view matches ever we saw the 10 worst so we're going to check out the 10 greatest i'm looking forward to extreme rules this weekend man first time saying that in quite some time i think the pay-per-view is going to be pretty damn good can triple h continue the streak of great shows in wwe putting on great pay-per-views let's see if he can but we're gonna check out some of the uh the better moments of extreme rules the better matches they've had on the show let's check this out Oh, so last week we had a look at the backwash of Extreme Rules, the dregs at the bottom of the can that even an alcoholic possum would turn its nose up at, and didn't we all have a fun time? We did. Shut up. Shut shut your mouth, we did. But this time <laughs> around, let's look at the very best matches that have Extremely Ruled. It's hard to write lists, and I've written over a hundred of them for Ollie Bloody Davis at this point, and he won't let me stop. Most of these matches are <laughs> stone cold classics and a stark reminder that even with a pay-per-view format that WWE's mostly ignored for the past decade, you can never fully write it off because almost every single year since its conception, there's been one absolute banger happening in Extreme Rules. I'm Adam Haling from Parts of Unknown, and here are the 10 greatest Extreme Rules matches ever. And if you do want to hear us be mean, or grumpy, or say, you know, swear a lot. Y'all go subscribe, uh, subscribe to the bad ones. Link to the last week's original list, video down below. Ever. Some, there's a in there. Number 10, Chris Jericho versus Rey Mysterio 2009. Many people correctly point to Chris Jericho's rivalry with Shawn Michaels as the best part of his late 2000s run. But what may be... I'm one of those people. I, I love his run against Shawn Michaels. It was great. On a par with that level <clears throat> of y 2 excellence is Jericho's 09 feud with mm -hmm. Rey Mysterio. This was a good feud Rey's as well. And taking it from him, Jericho started his performance at Extreme Rules at the merch stand, cutting a great troglodyte filled promo, working his way through the crowd before beginning his no-holds bar match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, these might have been the two best wrestlers in WWE at the time, and they again showed why it was criminal they didn't get an extended rivalry over the Cruiserweight title in WCW. The match also peaked at the perfect moment as Jericho managed to masterfully rip Mysterio's mask mm -hmm. off his face mid-619 and rolled him up to win his final WWE IC title. It doesn't quite reach the levels of greatness of their highly underrated match at the Bash a month later, but if this was the second best match in their feud, probably means it was a pretty f Great feud. No, it was Number a good nine, feud. New Day versus Daniel Bryan. Jericho is one of those people. Got to give him credit, man. He knows how to put on good matches, create good feuds, continually is able to keep himself fresh. That's the one thing I can appreciate about appreciate about Jericho. It's funny that I'm saying appreciate Jericho because you know the Jericho Appreciation Society. That was not I did not plan that, guys. Just letting that be known. But it's the one thing I can appreciate about Jericho is the fact that he's still after all these many years later able to put on good feuds that you'll remember and have great segments and and be entertaining brian and eric rowan versus heavy machinery 2019 in the oh yeah that was a pretty great match spot on this list we have the excellent three-way smackdown tag team title match from extreme rules 2019 wwe have been selective about when they want to care about their tag division but for this 14 is very minutes true. on this night they cared which is 14 minutes more then in 2020, you had a breakout performance from Heavy Machinery, whose run carried the middle of the match, with people getting genuinely behind them after the match started fairly tepid. Yet yeah, Daniel Bryan being just the best goddamn best, getting to mm -hmm. put his working shoes on again at Xavier Woods and Biggie, which led to an all-time great tag team finish with Biggie shrugging off Bryan's kicks and slaps before catching him mid backflip. You know the one Bryan does, mm -hmm. holding him on his shoulder while Bryan frantically tried to escape it. He rushed to tag Woods and hit the midnight hour to win the match. It's a brilliant way to cap off a match that started cold but ended white hot number eight christian versus this is hopefully what i can uh hope for to see more in the future just more of the tag team division being put on the spotlight which i do feel like it has been although the usos have been holding the the, the titles i do feel like there is some importance now in the tag team division for the most part and i can appreciate this it. is alberto del rio 2011 why did wwe hate christian so much don't know vince hated him he thought he was ugly so much so that he famously wanted to put a blue dot over christian's face whenever he was on screen such a normal man he was oh for wow one brief really moment however it appeared that wwe was finally gonna give christian his flowers after carrying ecw's carcass to the finish line and being <laughs> edge's corner man at wrestlemania at extreme rules 2011 christian faced notable prick alberto del rio for the vacant world heavyweight championship in a ladder match i hear christian 
is all right at them. Mm -hmm. Ladder matches go. This one is highly underrated. Arm-based ladder offense from Del Rio. Fellow noted nutter Brodus Clay somehow getting absolutely busted open. And Christian finally winning his first. Uh, I think I do vaguely recall this. I, obviously, Edge had to relinquish the title and retire. But he finally got the championship. He finally got the champion, uh, like the, the head championship on the brand. And it was a good moment. And I think this spurred up him uh, uh christian and randy orton's feud and where christian would do the one more match thing like that was his gimmick like give me one more match i think that spurred up their feud later on the world title in a genuinely emotional mm -hmm. moment celebrating with the recently retired edge his best friend slash kind of brother maybe people don't talk about this one as much because del rio is in it maybe it's because this is 2011 meaning michael cole is waxing dickhead on commentary oh, or maybe it's because wwe took this nice moment away just days later having randy orton dethrone christian cleed on yeah I, I think yep, i think that's that and that's how they started that that storyline Christian definitely deserved better. <laughs> Who's to say? But the match itself is a ladder classic. Just like number seven, Jeff Hardy versus Edge. Mm, 2009. 2000, yeah. Another match featuring the slowly crumbling bodies of the men who revolutionized the match type a decade earlier. Jeff Hardy and Edge's 2009 rivalry came to a head in a ladder match over big gold. Considering we know now how bad Edge's net was at the time, being less than two years out from his eventual nine-year retirement, it Damn. is insane the spots these two put on in this match. They Ooh. do the inverse of the classic TLC2 spot with Jeff catching Edge with a twist of fate as Edge goes for a spear off a ladder. They both tumble through a ladder bridge with a Bro, landing that they, <laughs> they they legit put their bodies on the line just to entertain us, bro. You gotta give them respect. Shall we say <laughs> Sucked. Look, they look just go that, so bro. hard in a ladder match that, again, isn't talked about nearly enough these mm. days. We it even should. got a fantastic finish as well. As Edge reaches for his title, Hardy pulls his legs through the rung of the ladder, leaving Edge to only be able to look up helplessly mm -hmm. as Jeff climbs the ladder, wins his gold. It's such a perfect bit of heel comeuppance that has yet to be done as well since. This match is also known as the precursor to CM Punk's yep. second money in the bank cash-in, making Jeff's long-awaited celebration wait just a little bit longer. Yup. This spurred their few to Ah, oh, man. Whew. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. SmackDown, they 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 definitely still had some good storylines going on on SmackDown for sure. Number six, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus, 2012. Hey, look, it's the match they should have had at WrestleMania. Yeah. If they had had that match at WrestleMania, would Daniel Bryan have got the groundswell of support he got for being? And that's always an interesting interesting thing. If they would have gave us the match he was supposed to have at WrestleMania, would the Yes Movement be as over as it, it as it was? be honest with you, I don't think it would have. Because people were so fucking disgusted on how Daniel Bryan got treated that it propelled him even more. Being so poorly booked, effectively starting the yes movement and this eventual rise to the top, maybe not. So let's just be happy we got this match here at Extreme Rules. The match in question is a perfect example of how to do a good two out of three falls match in a way that doesn't make the first two falls completely arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Rather than the typical formula of heel gets heat and also a pinfall, babyface makes his comeback and also a pinfall, then the real match starts and people wake up because the finish could now come at any point. This match uses the stipulation to its advantage. In a strategic play, Brian sacrifices the first fall of the match, losing by disqualification for kicking too much ass, to try and weaken Sheamus for the subsequent falls. He then immediately locks in the yes lock for a speedy mm -hmm. second fall win, and then it was a battle for Sheamus to overcome his weakened state to get the best of the conniving Brian, which he did with one of the best bro kicks ever. This is a <laughs> clinic and the highest point of Sheamus' run as world heavyweight champion, which otherwise blew a fairly significant fat one. One five hundred fella. Number five, what? Samoa Joe versus Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt versus oh, Roman Reigns. Yeah. 2017. And a partridge in a pear tree. Now, we're really starting to get into the goodies of this list. If I'm being honest, any of the top five matches on this list could have taken the top spot. If they're your number one, won't argue with you. But this is my list, and this is the order. Please feel free to voice your displeasure at TempestWT on Twitter. Also, we have a fatal five-way at number five. And isn't that tidy from a little OCD brain. The year was 2017 and WWE needed to cement a new challenger for Universal Champion Brock Lesnar to face a Great Balls of Fire. Great Balls of Fire, it's, yep. It hasn't become less bizarrely called a pay-per-view that. Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns were the top guys on Raw 
that as a main event scene. Yeah. Boys, everyone involved had a feasible shot at winning, which gave the match a level of unpredictability that you sometimes miss from WWE main events. There is so much to like in this match, be it the furthering of Seth and Bray's rivalry, or just the insane heat Roman was continuing <laughs> to get after taking over The Undertaker's yard. WWE does multi-man main event matches exceptionally well, and this is one of the best examples of that. And also Samoa Joe won. Isn't that just peachy? It was great. He won. Only to be fair to Brock, which is so fucking stupid. They only fed him to Brock to get over Roman in the end. Oh my god. Comment down below if you if y'all guys if y'all agree with me that Samoa Joe should have been at least one of the people to beat Rome, uh to beat Brock Lesnar to become the champion. Or at least should have been a world champion in WWE. Comment down, comment down below if y'all in agreement with me on that. Okay. Number four, The Shield versus Evolution 2014. Everyone oh, this was Shield fun. I remember this. Look at them. I, I forgot this was at Extreme Rules. This was fun. So it wasn't until 2014 that the group started being allowed to properly get over with the audience as a babyface trio. Had a brilliant match with the Wyatt family. Yep, that Liberation was good Taylor, too. An exhibition squash with Kane and the mm -hmm. old age outlaws at WrestleMania sex letters. But then Extreme this, Rules. I forgot they this was actually Extreme Rules. This was so good, bro. Factions. This was such they a had good had a match. reunion in seven years. All of them never losers with a penchant for winning the wrong matches. And they got bodied <laughs> that shit was so crazy they put them over they beat the crap out of them not once but twice back-to-back pay-per-views i believe they beat them and then that's when self turned but this was so good evolution put the young certified future stars over clean as a sheet yeah one of the most fun that match was fun bro wwe history maybe the most fun trios match in wwe history that Possibly match was great rematch of payback but that's only because of blue teaster it was constant mayhem in the way that made the shield work in the first place capped off with a great dive from the tron from seth rollins a month or so ahead yep the dreaded plan b Number three, John Cena versus Brock Lesnar, 2012. Had Remember Brock this one too. Won this match, it would have been number one with a bullet. How could you be handed Brock Lesnar on a silver platter? Back from a successful run as UFC heavyweight champion and the biggest box office draw in combat sports for the last four years, and have him lose, lose in his first match. That made no sense to me. When I watched that happen, I was like, "Huh, that don't make sense." Of course. Of course, y'all know Dub would love that, but <laughs> from a booking standpoint, that don't make sense. <laughs> it just did. Genuinely makes me crosser than a dad who's caught his d in the fridge. It didn't even make sense for John Cena to win. Yeah. The, sto the story. I thought the story coming out of WrestleMania was that he'd lost his groove. Yeah. The Rock beat him, and he wins this match. That made no sense. The story should have been John King. Ever since he's lost against the Rock, he's not himself. He doesn't. He's he's losing himself. Possibly a heel turn. Nonsense. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled positivity. It was a good match, though. The WWE main event style was very distinct around this time. This match did not fit that style whatsoever. Brock Lesnar, being the madman that he is, busted Cena open hard way, hit a flying running knee that sent him ass over tea kettle yeah. over the top rope and could have killed him. And the match just had a feeling of danger and yeah. violence that had been completely absent from about 99% of matches during WWE's PG era. This wasn't polished and clean. It was a snuff film that felt like it could have ended at any time. Yeah, he was beating the crap out of him. Cena's chest until Cena wins lol. Of course. Yeah. Number two, The Miz versus Cesaro versus Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens 2016. People bloody love this match. Most people have this match at number one. And to be honest, fair enough. A lot is said about The Miz bringing some prestige back to the IC title in 2016. And while that's only mostly true, if all of his title matches were at this level, mm -hmm. it probably could have happened. This had all the fun of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn fight forever energy mixed in with Cesaro once again doing anything he could to just win a singles title in WWE while The Miz was trying to do everything he could to steal it away. This match might have had the best pinfall breakups of any WWE match with everyone waiting till the perfect moment to break things up and give fans reason to believe this is the finish time and time again. It was just so much fun to be had watching this match like most four ways it follows the formula i'm not sure if i i probably don't remember this match too too well 
I may have to go back and check it out. I don't remember this match too well, so. Guys taking turns before being dumped down and new man enters and rotate repeat. But when the dudes involved are Cesaro, Sami Zayn, yeah. Kevin Owens, also Miz, I suppose. Although, to be fair, his heelish antics are very funny in this match. You have a constant flow of excellent spots that never slows and builds anticipation for an eventual finish seeing Miz finally pick his spot just right and escape with the title. It would be the best match on most pay-per-views, but not Extreme Rules 2016, turns out. That would be number one, Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles. This was. 2016. There is a reason AJ Styles won this was a good one. <laughs> in I can understand why this is number one. Matches like this. Roman Reigns was improving as a wrestler in 2016, but still not quite at the level that he would be a few years later. However, when he was given a top tier opponent, he could absolutely tear mm -hmm. the house down. Thankfully for him, there may be no wrestler in the world better in 2016 than AJ Styles. Just prior to his heel turn, he was caught in the middle of the club's feud with the Usos, which spilled over into this extreme rules match, and everyone got involved. The gang's all here. Some say this match solidified AJ's place within WWE and in the eyes of Vince McMahon, having mm -hmm. a blowaway match with the face of the company during a time where the WrestleMania 32 main event scene super didn't light the world on fire. If mm -hmm. that's true, it is totally justified because AJ did everything in the world to make Roman Reigns look like an unstoppable world champion, complete with dudes coming off the top rope, dudes being hit mid-air spear. with ridiculous <laughs> spears. Extreme Rules has had many fantastic matches over its decade-plus history, but this one was nah, phenomenal. This, this, oh, I see what he did there. No, nah, this that was I a did. great match. Boy, I, whoo, that, I can and see that one being number one. It makes Extreme sense rules for that one being number one. That one was, was pretty pretty fucking good bro <laughs> pretty pretty good man uh i do wish at some point maybe aj styles will get one more title run opportunity i don't know when but uh maybe we'll see that in the near future i do think aj could get at least one more title opportunity one more title championship run but comment down below let me know what was your favorite extreme uh rules pay-per-view match from this video and uh if you guys agree with the number one spot um me personally i can understand why that's being number one but one of my favorites had to be i forgot it was at extreme rules shield versus evolution that match was so fucking fun i'm definitely gonna go watch it after this that probably would have been my number one but i understand why aj styles versus uh roman that one was a very 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 good match um so comment down below let me know your opinions on that but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel man you guys have been running it up thank you guys so much for that appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace